as I said, I mean, I think NASCAR would say, well, no harm, no foul in this instance. And we got some great Atlanta racing last night. We got more of that under the green flag. As I mentioned, I mean, DW saying among many who said this was the best race he's ever seen. Uh, so this was the third race, Stevie, on this reprofiled Atlanta, which narrower surface, higher elevated banking, uh, obviously smooth asphalt, not the old weathered uh, pavement that they had there toward the end of uh, its run. Um, what do we make of this? Like, is Atlanta right, like right now just in a sweet spot as this pavement ages? Will it be like this for a while? Is it going to change each each race weekend? You know, is it going to you know wh where where is it head from here? So I spoke with Steve Swift, who works for Marcus Smith's group. He's really in charge of track surfaces, track things. And I, I, I was like, man, we had a conversation about this asphalt. Remind me what you did. So for years, when you repaved a racetrack, you used whatever the best asphalt was out there that you put on every interstate because it's a huge financial cost and you want it to last forever. And Marcus, um, who is who, you know, people can say what they want about Marcus, but his long term vision is quite impressive at times. The Roval, everybody thought, me included, was silly, ended up being amazing. Hey, we're going to bring back North Wilkesboro. What a great show. Uh, you know, all these things. Him and Steve Smith got to, uh, Steve Swift got together and he said, Wait, I don't want to use street asphalt. Re Repave stink. People love Atlanta because it's old asphalt. Find me something better. So Steve explained to me that this asphalt should last as long as the good stuff because of what it's made out of. I'm not going to pretend to be an asphalt guy, but that it shouldn't race like it's brand new as long. It should quote age. So when we say it's lost grip, he came right over to me before the race. He goes, make sure everybody knows it's lost grip because we wanted it to. Huh. Like we want this place to lose grip. I think it's unfair to think anyone smart enough to know how quickly it loses grip. Um, I don't think it's just that though. Look, what we are in is we have a great, you know, people don't ever want to give the car credit, but we have a great power combination, downforce combination, track radius, track grip, track size, that you're on this threshold of, look, if you want to go run wide open and qualifying, I could easily make it drive wide open. They wouldn't even wiggle and we'd qualify dead last. So now if you want to be good, I can make it drive worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, which we should ap ap applaud. Yeah. Like I want to see the driver's efforts. Yep. William Byron said it the best. He goes, we now have our super speedway where we drive them. Yep. My point is they're not yeah. steering them. At Talladega, they're steering them. Inside, yeah. outside, inside, outside. At Daytona, a little bit of both. Now we have a great third one that's very different. Ross Chastain said, I wasn't wide open one lap. Not I was going to make lap, that point. Not I mean, that, qualifying, not one lap. That was stunning to me when Ross said that in our interview last night because you think like, oh, it's Daytona, it's Talladega. Like you said, flat. Just steer. Anybody can do it. No. Ross said, no, I was out of the gas every lap this whole weekend. So I prep for different races, different ways. And if I could go back and do Atlanta over again, the racing was amazing. I would put the telemetry in a little bit more. I'm going to mm -hmm. go back and watch the race from three or four different cars with all and with the audio on the onboard on NASCAR.com feed. And I'm going to listen to all the audio and I want to hear how much they're out of the gas. I'm going to look at the SMT data. Like I got to understand what they're doing because I believe they are work. We see them working the wheel. But I think they're working the pedals way more than we think. I think they are in and out of the gas a lot. And I think we have this really magical spot where um, it's a little bit of everything, right? Like it has enough drafting characteristics that some of the smaller teams aren't behind on technology and speed where they are all included in the race, which makes for good racing. The good driving cars still have an advantage. Bad driving cars still don't. Like it all matters still. Um, and out the window, you know, we used to describe Bristol as kind of jet fighters in a soup bowl. Um, well now we have like, I guess, rocket ships in a set in, in a, in a platter, right? Because it's like the track is three times bigger than Bristol and they're going, let's check my math here, 50 ish miles an hour faster. And it's, it's, it, it. I watched for nearly 300 miles and I'm not sure my mind has quite figured out just how fast it looks. Like it's unbelievable. And I think some of it is because my whole life, when I look out the window on a mile and a half racetrack, there's a cadence. There's an acceleration, there's a deceleration, there's an acceleration, there's a deceleration. 
You know how Daytona and Talladega is only like, what, 0.16 miles bigger, but it looks like it's a mile bigger? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm the only one that thinks that. But like when I go to the, the roof at Talladega, I'm like, there's no way. Someone remeasure this place. It looks <laughs> like it's four miles versus Daytona, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, Atlanta is a mile smaller. It looks like it's it, it, the smallest thing you've ever seen in the world with them running wide open. And yeah. And I want, I said on the broadcast, and I'm going to say it again, a lot of mix goes into this. Marcus with his racetrack, the asphalt, the tire, the engine. But in the end, it's the drivers. Because if the drivers wanted to go around there and take it easy and run single file and pick them off one at a time, then none of this would work. But they don't. They are the, as aggressive. It's nuts. It was crazy. And we could talk about the weather, but it was crazy in stage one. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, it is, in my opinion, the number one ticket in NASCAR. I will say that. Um, it used to be Bristol. If I had a fan who had never seen NASCAR and they said, hey, man, where should I go? I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say, hey, man, listen, it says it's Atlanta. It's really not. It's like 30 minutes south of Atlanta. There's really nothing around the racetrack down there. Find yourself a great place to stay in Atlanta or a cool small town somewhere. I do think that's an issue long term for this racetrack. And I know there's conversation about entertainment district. It has to have it because what happens on racetrack could be the number one ticket or, in my opinion, is now the number one ticket in NASCAR. But the weekend experience is going to be a hard sell for you and I to bring our wives, Nate. Right. Yeah. And, and I say that because that's the new sports entertainment. Con like This isn't a NASCAR thing. We go to a football game. Unless you love Green Bay, you're not going to Wisconsin. Like, you're just not. I'm sorry. You're going to go to Vegas. You're going to stay on the street. Like, so, yeah. so I know Marcus knows this, and I'm, I'm half talking to the county and the town and Atlanta. Like, you have something magical. You got to give the fans another reason to go down to Hampton, Georgia. Because, and, and it doesn't have to be the biggest over-the-top thing, but give me something, man. Some nice hotels, a couple nice restaurants. I don't care if it's a nice campground. Whatever the fans want, we need to give them something. Look at Pocono. It's in the middle of nowhere, but I believe it's a great camping thing with what they've done with infrastructure at the racetrack. Um, we got it. We got to start giving the fans a reason to be there in the heat of the summer because the racetrack reason is there. It is unbelievable. Yeah, it's a bold statement to say that's number one ticket in NASCAR. But I mean, you know, I know I can't believe I'm saying it. Like, well, I, think I mean, I but saying, watch the end of stage one. Go back and watch the end of stage one. And like you said, that was before the threat of weather and you know the moves that Kyle Larson was making on Ryan Blaney and Blaney trying to defend. Like, so we don't stuff. need another. Yeah, we don't need another. Like this yeah. is like some is good, more is not better. Um. Look at what we have. Go to the Daytona 500, see the flyover. It matches the Super Bowl. There's nothing like, I mean, it, it does. They come right over the, it's unbelievable. Go to Chicago, stay in a hotel, walk to a street course. Go to Nashville, stay on Broadway. Go to a track a little bit outside of Nashville. Same thing, a little bit of a ride. I'm not going to hide it from the fans. It's a 40-minute ride. Racing, unbelievable. And you're in probably the entertainment mecca of the East Coast now in Nashville. Atlanta, what happened on the racetrack is the most eye-popping thing in the world. When you drive over the mountains and see Bristol standing outside of the, uh, uh, like on top of the mountaintop, it's a moment you'll, like my point is I can go week in and week out and tell a fan why they should go there. What, what Ben Kennedy, Steve Phelps, Jim France, what, what they're doing with the schedule I think is amazing, which is everyone isn't going to like everything, which is perfect because that means everyone is going to like something, right? Like, like we can't all like the same restaurants. And what we have now is a magical, you want, listen, you want a great weekend with your wife and you love wine and you want to be dined, go to Sonoma, stay mm -hmm. in Napa. Like, like I can defend every race market we're in and why you should go there. And, and I just think that is like this, like even New Hampshire, we could pick on this race coming up in New Hampshire because it had two and it's down to one. New England is gorgeous in the summer. Like, right? Like, like my point is there, I could literally go through the, the list and I can give you a handicap of the race, but I could also write a little one paragraph on that has nothing to do with the race. Um, that's the coffee table book we're going to make, Nate, is I'm going to make my <laughs> social coffee table book with my beer joint, my restaurant, and my either fine dining or ice cream joint at every racetrack because everybody talks about the races. I want to tell everybody what they do away from the races. Yeah. Um, because in the end, if you're going to travel in, you have to have a full weekend of entertainment. And, and they all kind of have it.
Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube channel.